Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Review Ron, and today we're going to be going over some more builds in Deep Rock Galactic. This is taking a look at the engineer's uh, equipment this time, talking about the platform gun and the sentry turret. So I'm going to be going over what I usually run with them, and um, I usually run at least two different builds depending on what I want with each of these. So with the platform gun, in tier one we have supercharged feed mechanism. So this increases the rate of fire so you can shoot out platforms quicker. This one can be kind of useful. Um, it can be useful in hordes or if you're doing like the uh, drill dozer mission it can be pretty useful. You can shoot these up faster so you can set up your turrets quicker or uh, create ways where you and your team can run faster. So it does have some use. I don't find myself taking the supercharged feed mechanism all that much but it can be useful. We have expanded ammo bags as our second tier one option. This just gives us more ammunition, so we get eight more. So we go from 16 to 24. We'll get more from resupply pods, which is really nice. And we'll just be able to put up more platforms. Always useful. Uh, we also have high capacity magazine. This doubles our clip size for the, uh, the platform gun. So instead of holding four, we hold eight. I pretty much always go with the expanded ammo bags here in tier one. Um, it's just so handy to have extra ammo and you're going to be using up a lot of platforms a lot of the time, at least I do. In tier two, we have uh, one option here, which is Plastcrete Mark II, um, interesting name. This makes it so we just take reduced fall damage when we fall on our platforms. This also applies to friendlies, so if you can fire a uh, platform down below somebody while they're following um, and it can hit there before they actually hit, uh, you can also cushion their impact, which is really nice. It does allow Engineer to uh, move around a bit easier. Uh, it also makes it so you can survive certain things that you wouldn't be able to if you get knocked off a zip line, fall off of one of your uh, platforms you already made, potentially get grabbed by a grabber and be dropped from a high area. You can potentially survive with this. Finally, in tier three, we have two options of expanded ammo bags. This gives us another eight rounds, so we go from 16 to 24 or from 16 to 32. This is also great. You get more resupply, uh, or you get more from a resupply than you normally would, and it's just really nice to have extra ammo. Our second option in tier three is repellent additive. This makes it so enemies will avoid uh, walking on your platforms as much as possible. So this can be really useful if you want to make like a bunker strategy, um, which is pretty viable in certain maps. Um, not always the most practical solution, even on higher ranks. Um, it can be pretty bad, especially if there's like a detonator that crawls in there. Uh, then that's pretty much just instant death. But um, pretty good option there, and you can use it to um, your advantage, at least if you have a bunch of platforms connected and you've made a bridge. You can run across them. Enemies are less likely to try to at least melee you. They'll probably still try to spit on you, uh, which would be the most effective thing for them to do. but. They won't be crawling after you, so you probably won't be getting stunned and hit by grunts, at least too frequently. Both these options are really good. With my standard uh, platform gun, I usually go with ammo, um, and then I just use this purely for utility. That's really what I want. You can still create bunkers out of this, you can still create overhangs, you can still do most of the things that you could do with your platform gun before. Uh, this way you can do it much more often and you can really build like stairs, ramps, uh, bridges, wherever you need. You should have plenty of ammunition and you get a lot back every time you resupply. The second option that you can go with is uh, of course switching over to the additive or the repellent additive so that you can keep enemies away from you. This is a pretty good option. Um, keeping enemies away is pretty useful. You could also switch over to high capacity magazine in tier one. That way you just have extra ammo in your magazine. So you won't be able to use this as often, but you can use it very quickly. So if you're finding yourself um, attacked by hordes pretty frequently, you can use this build and it can yield some pretty good results. That's the two builds I usually go for the platform gun. Now let's take a look at some builds with the uh, sentry gun. So our first option in tier one is the Gemini system. This makes it so we can deploy two different turrets. Uh, this gives you extra ammo uh, and you have a well double the rate of fire because you have two turrets up. This can be really good um, and it's usually what I go for in my general build but both tier one options are pretty good. The other tier option is LMG Mark II. This makes it so your turret is upgraded with increased ammo 
uh, increased damage and increased range. I'm going to be going over my double build turret uh, build first and then we'll go over a single build turret. You can build the turrets in a couple different ways though. Two turrets, I find it easier to contain an area um, and let my turrets really take over from uh, pretty much just like one cone of fire where they can just keep firing down in this one area. That's how I usually play the turrets, but you can go for a much larger area or a much more micromanaged build and I'll talk about those in a little bit. Um, in tier 2 we have expanded ammo bags, this gives you more ammunition, so you get an additional 90 rounds to your turrets, which is pretty good. You'll also get more from resupplies, always useful. We have quick deploy, which is our second option. This makes it so we can build up the turrets faster, so instead of taking 4 seconds to construct, this takes 2 seconds. This can be really useful too, um, especially if you have multiple turrets, you can build them up really fast, or you can have teammates help you build the turrets up really fast. That's a Another thing you can do with the turrets, once the engineer picks the place for the turret, anybody can build the turret up. Um, and if you guys work together, it goes up faster. And then we also have wide mouth uh, refill port. This makes it so you can refill your turrets quicker. This can be useful. Um, the refill rate isn't too bad on the turrets. Um, at least I don't find it too bad, but this does make it feel a little bit snappier. I usually go with a quick deploy if I'm running two turrets just because I find it easier to set both of them up quickly that way. That way I can even, uh, if I'm getting chased, I can set one up and then run and go set up another one and then just let them fire as I kind of run around and try to make the area a little bit safer. This does help with that. Um, but like expanded ammo bags is also a pretty good choice. Makes it so you just get more ammo, which is always a good thing. There's not really a bad option here in tier two, but I usually go with the quick deploy if I'm running two turrets. In tier three, we have penetrating rounds. This makes it so your turrets have even better armor breaking. They already had 100%, now they go up to 400% so they can punch through armor even better. Always nice. We have stun. This just makes it so we have a 20% chance to stun enemies whenever our targets, or whenever our turrets start to target them. Pretty good. Uh, well, I guess it's not us. It's the turrets actually stunning the enemy, I should say. So 20% chance every time they hit an enemy to stun them, which can be really good. Stuns are really useful. You can easily get behind larger enemies that way, or even smaller enemies that way, or just take your time hitting a headshot on a small enemy. So stun is pretty good. And then we have expanded ammo capacity. This makes it so our turrets no longer hold uh, 90 rounds, they hold 120 rounds, which can be really useful. Sometimes you get hordes that really last a long time, or you put your turrets in an area that you know is going to be a good place, but it's kind of hard to get to. You know, you put a platform somewhere else on the other side of the uh, cavern, put the turrets up there, it's a little bit tricky to get to them. So having extra ammo can be really nice. With the two turrets, I usually go with the penetrating rounds for extra armor breaking. Uh, again, pretty much all of these are really good. I've used stun on double turrets, that's really good too, because you have two turrets, you're stunning enemies pretty frequently, so you can kill them or your teammates can focus them down quicker. That's pretty useful. And expanded ammo bags is also, or expanded ammo capacity is also pretty nice for them, just so that you don't have to reload them as often, or when you do reload them, they're very topped off. Um, and then in tier 4 we have defender system. This makes it so you increase the power of shot, almost doubling your power per shot, but you have a uh, smaller cone of fire. This isn't usually a big deal though, um, and it's usually what I go with with this build, but when you have two turrets, you can set them both up pretty close to one another with overlapping fire and really cover a pretty large area um, with the two turrets. Uh, you can also set this just with its uh, or its back facing a wall. That way, enemies are very unlikely to be spawning anywhere near that. Uh, if they are, then they're crawling down the wall behind it, or maybe around the wall near it. Uh, but that's really going to be the only two areas where your turret can't hit them, or if something's hovering directly above it. But you'll be able to hit pretty much everything else. So if you put your turret against walls, it's not a big deal. If you have two turrets, again, it's not a big deal because you can have a pretty uh, wide uh, cone of fire with overlapping fire on it, which can be pretty useful. Our second option is Hawkeye system. This uh, increases our effective range of the turret by another 15 meters. So instead of going, so instead of having a 20 meter effective range, we have a 35 uh, meter effective range. And you can use your laser pointer to specifically target certain enemies. So your turret or turrets will attack that target. 
This one can be pretty useful, especially if you really want to hammer down enemies and it can be really useful with the stun because you can stun larger enemies with this. So that's uh, an effective build. I usually don't run Hawkeye system when I'm running two turrets. Most of the time I usually run defender system so that I get more damage for them. You could also go with one century build too, which is then going with the LMG Mark II turret. You could once again go with expanded ammo bags just so you have extra ammo. That's always handy. Um, you don't really need the quick deploy because you can uh, put it up fairly quick at four seconds. This does make it a little bit quicker and that can actually make a difference sometimes. Refilling your turret can also be useful. I usually, if I'm running one turret, I usually go with expanded ammo bags just so I can have extra ammo to put into my turret so that I can get the most out of every shot from it. Uh, in tier 3, once again, uh, penetrating rounds is a great option for punching through armor. Stun is a great option for stunning enemies. I think stun is more consistent with two turrets, but one turret can work out pretty well. Um, I usually go with the expanded ammo capacity for this, just so that I don't have to be reloading it as often. Um, now it'll hold 135 shots which is plenty enough to survive pretty much any horde. In tier four, I kind of switch between defender system and Hawkeye system. I usually go with Hawkeye system. This gives my turret the maximum amount of range that it can have, um, and I can specifically target single enemies. So I can use this for large enemies or I can use it for enemies um, that are particularly giving us trouble. You can run defender system if you want to get the most amount of damage per shot from your turret. Um, this, you do have to position your turret in a good way, which I usually, um, like I said, put the back of the turret to a wall and then it can hit most enemies pretty reliably. This is another great uh, build for it too. You could go with a status build too, going with the dual turrets, uh, going with stun and then going with the targeting system. That way you can lock on easier and just stun, try to stun enemies quicker. I usually go with expanded ammo bags if I'm doing this just so that I can have the most amount of ammunition so I can get the most from resupplies because I know my turrets are gonna be going through ammo more because they're not going to be killing enemies quickly. They're mostly there for stunning. Uh, these are usually the three builds I switch between the turrets. Um, I have seen quite a few different builds with them though and each one comes with its own pros and cons. Uh, these are the three that I like though. So that'll do it for the engineer's equipment. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this and found it informative. If you did and you're not subscribed, be sure that you get subscribed. That way you get notifications whenever I post any of these videos. And I will see all of you guys next time. Till then, stay cool and bye.